dexterous robot with advanced electronics, software, and control systems. The test bed will demonstrate the ability to service a range of spacecraft. As a child, she dreamed of becoming an astronaut and traveling to space, and she's been working hard towards that goal ever since. Please welcome rocket scientist, explorer, advocate for women in technology, the incredible Natalie Panic. Oh my gosh. Honestly, we just look through your resume, what you've been able to accomplish in 31 years, and we all feel like underachievers, but this is great. We need role models like you. Talk to us a little bit about how you developed this curiosity as a young girl to explore space. I grew up in Alberta in the Rockies, spent a lot of time outdoors, stargazing. I also watched a lot of science fiction growing up, like Stargate SG-1, and so I think that was the perfect recipe for this dream of space travel and wanting to see Earth from a different perspective. And then you carried it through in high school, even though oftentimes you were the only girl in class. You said you would shut that out, that, that you know, gender inequality in that sense, in terms of, you know, 40 boys to you. How did you work through that? I mean, it was definitely intimidating. I had to build up my confidence, but my goal was to learn, to be in a situation where I could be surrounded by people who could teach me things I didn't know. And I had an amazing physics professor, uh, physics teacher, who is my champion and really encouraged me to take the road less traveled. As a mentor. And then we have to talk about your NASA story. So you tried to get an internship, not once, not twice, not three times, four times. Mm -hmm. Most people would give up after one time. And then what did you do? Then I honestly I had this idea just to pick up the phone and call the Office of Higher Education. I was hoping to get feedback on my application and just figure out what I could be doing to get to an internship at NASA or experience in the aerospace industry. And on that phone conversation, I was offered the internship position. So See? it worked out. Perseverance. That's, oh, I love that story. Your tenacity yeah. pulled through. Like I said, most people would just think I'm not good enough and give up after that first time. So only two female astronauts in Canada's history. You hope to be the third, but you said you're not quite sure how to get there yourself. So what path are you taking? Have you talked to Chris Hadfield? I mean, how do you go about it? It's definitely a lifelong goal. Uh, the Canadian Space Agency only has astronaut recruitment campaigns every certain number of years. And so you kind of just try and have experiences that might get you there, whether it's learning to fly a plane, working in engineering, building space robotics, which I do now at my current job, and hope that when that campaign is launched, which they just, which they just did in August, that you have what it takes. You are the right stuff that they're looking for at we the time. We are rooting for you. That would be amazing. Now, I know, uh, can I say you're like very chummy with our prime minister right now <laughs> like this is a big deal talk to us about how you actually worked with him over the summer. So I was approached by Instagram earlier this year to participate in a campaign which was celebrating uh, young people in Canada and how education has helped their careers. And then that extended to a roundtable discussion at Parliament Hill with a number of other young Canadians where we just had a forum to talk about what our passions are and what matters to us in Canada. You do a lot of speaking events. I'm honored to be working with you tonight uh, as part of the Women in Sync, Women of Influence Live in Sync series with Activia. So they've chosen nine women and you're going to be giving a talk today about finding that balance you can actually join us from 6 30 to 8 30 tonight how do you strike a balance being so in demand for these speaking events to inspire all of us and find that work-life balance all the while having these lofty goals I mean I, I have so many passions whether it's my engineering career being outdoors and I realized a couple years ago that I had this platform and opportunity to share those experiences with young people. Growing up, I wish I had the opportunity to just email an astronaut or a scientist and ask them how they got there. So by speaking at these events and starting my blog, I can put myself out there and create a way for young people to connect with me and ask me simple questions. Your blog is called The Panic Room, P-A-N-E-K. Do you think we'll, we will finally get that, you know, gender uh, the wage gap met sooner because that study said it's going to take 170 years it, before we have gender equality. You know, it all starts pay. with conversations, talking about it here, talking about it with young people, not being afraid to talk about what you make. And I think it's amazing that the Canadian government, I believe in 2018, is making it mandatory for government uh, jobs to have equal pay. Okay, thank you so much, Natalie. We'll see you tonight. Come check it out, everybody. Check it out at uh, breakfasttelevision.ca for a little route into the uh, talk this evening. This is just scratching the surface. Right now, over to Kev.